Here we are uh, back on the 305 conversion 334 stroker See. and what and what we're doing right now is we're going to enlarge the real oil galleys. Now some blocks aren't as bad as others are but what you get into with this is the problem is that if the oil can't return quick enough on a motor when you're in your high RPM then the oil pump could actually become uncovered with oil. This is especially true with a hydraulic camshaft which in itself depends on oil to pump up the lifters. Now I've already done one right here and you couldn't believe how small it is but it's just not going in there. The thing that where most people miss this is on the inside most some people would just go in there damn it Sorry guys, you know me and my big feet, we've been down this road. Alright, uh, you know that on the corners, this mistake that a lot of people make when they're doing this is they'll take their grinder and they'll go in here and just hit the circle, go around it. But it's not that simple. You have to get underneath and get in because there's a drop off like a cliff right here. We got to radius that to where when I stick my finger, I feel nothing but smooth and contour. Remember, oil like air is gonna to flow to the path of least resistance. The quicker we can get it coming in here, back there, the quicker we get it back to the pan. Now, the other thing is these holes here. Well, you say, well, it's got them holes there. No, it don't because I purposely tap these holes and I put these things called pipe, um, I can't think of the name of it. They're oil block restrictors, I believe. They're pipes that are threaded that come up to here to keep the oil from going down there. Because guess what happens when oil comes down there? It falls right on top of the cam, goes on top of the crank. So where do we want oil? We want oil in two areas only. Exiting here and here, and then coming here to the front and exiting here and here. By the way, we got the owner of the engine block here that's uh, come over here to make sure he's getting his money's worth. This is the famous one and only Troy Holder of Holder's Boulder. Yeah. And um, he has to come over here and make sure that I'm not trying to pull a fast one and beat him out of any money, so no problem. All right, anyway, right here, what we're going to do is on this it's going to be different because what I've actually got to do without seeing it leveled what you got is a rise right here so let's say the oil comes down well look at the hill as we know gravity is not going to let this come up so what I have to do is take the grinder come in here and dig a trench to where all this is gone where it will let the oil it's like this on both ways I'm going to let you see this while I do it so you can understand. I come from the front side, and what I do is I'm going to start with a downward digging motion. Okay, and now I'm going to come from this side um, right here and hit it. Now, i am got to work that a while. You remember how hard that the rise was coming from the galley area over into the timing cover? Well, the problem is... Uh, that with screen kits, I got a kit. I'm going to show you the parts laid out. It comes with two front pieces, two rear. And unfortunately, you have to buy two of them kits. I examined it carefully because the two that goes in the rear, because I'm doing this, has to go into the front. There's no room for the one to have a press fit into the front, and I cannot anchor it with a screw. They will not put four of them in a box because, as you know, Pioneer, Comp, or whoever wants to make the money, so they only put two in one, so you have to buy them. Another one of them political bullshit deals. So anyway, 
I'm going to go in here and level it. We'll get back with this, and then I'm going to give you a front view and show you what's going on. But the whole purpose is to keep oil coming to the front to exit, to the rear to exit, none in the center, so that it don't drop on the crankshaft, create windage and drag, so we can get all the free horsepower we can get our hands on. All right, all for now. One thing I left out is I wanted to show you, look how bad that that hole is, you know, restricted right there. I mean, it ain't even probably a third of the size of what it can be. And just to show you, while you're sitting here looking at it, I'm just, I'm just taking a couple of seconds here even. Watch. Now see how I'm going in a downward motion, following the path. I'm not just staying on the top. I'm always following going down in the swoop, just like porting ahead. Now, uh, what I'm going to do is stop for right now. You can already see an incredible amount of enlargement, but uh, I've got to work it where I'm not going to be able to get a camera feed in it. So, um, but you can just tell by the amount that I've ground, I probably hit it with about 30 to 35% bigger enlargement than what it was stock. I'll get some more lights in here. We'll go upside down on the block, take a closer look. But while I'm at it, I got some I want to show you that, that uh, uh, whoop, ah, sorry about that. Right, what we're looking at right here is the hole on the rear galley where it runs into the distributor. I go in here with the grinder, of course, and radius and roll all that back, but here's what a lot of people don't know. Your MSD distributors and different aftermarket distributors have O-rings in them, and they're very tight clearance because that's what you're paying for. But you see that hole? Uh, you go in there with a grinder, and you've got to radius that hole so that it's got a blend to feed oiling around it, and then mainly... Right here, what you have to do is take the die grinder and you go around the edge like this. Watch here. Now, I'll go back in there with a stone and... Uh, hit it and then sand roll it. Now why am I doing that? Because the MSD distributors and some of the Mallory's and other ones have a really tight billet clearance and they've got an O-ring. Well, if you don't radius that to where when you're compressing it, it can blend it and squeeze the distributor down in there, it'll tear the O-ring out and then you've got uh, not a good situation. So, we'll talk more about the distributor hole when I take the stones and blend all that in. And uh, that's all on the lifter galley for right now at this minute. I'll go ahead and complete the oiling, come back on it, get you some good photo shoots. But these things here, people, are things that you can do yourself. Don't pay a machine shop to do this. Get the balls, grab the grinder, and go in here and do this because the machine shops aren't going to do it because it takes time, and they say, oh, it ain't worth it. You don't have to do that. You don't have to do that. I'm going to beg to differ. This is your oiling system. It's like your heartbeat. If you had to compare this to the human body, what we're talking about right here is cholesterol. You seen how it was before? That would be your arteries with cholesterol. This right here is your arteries uh, for not eating eggs, uh, for eating healthy, not eating red meat. This right here is a vegetarian block, if you will. By cleaning them oil passages, you're able to get a better flow, lifeblood of the motor. Okay.